take a look at the colors of the times. Um, we're going to kind of look back in history for about five decades or so and just explore what colors were prevalent in those time periods and how they influenced design and how what was going on during those time periods influenced what colors became popular and, and how they interacted with design. It's, it's pretty hard to actually summarize an entire decade with just a handful of colors, but if you look back, history shows that each decade has been dominated by certain color groups that were synonymous with that period of time. We'll start with the 1950s. In the 1950s, World War II had just ended and comfort finally became familiar again to many people. It was time to really end the Great Depression emotionally for many as well. The economy was booming thanks to women showing equality in the workplace and the manufacturing needs of the war. And just as the surfacing of new technologies and chemical advances entered the domestic market, it allowed for a broader range of colors for homes inside and out. So this helped to surface new optimism and a settling down was almost a dreamlike ideal. This optimism might inspire um, that it was finally safe to use brighter colors like oranges and bolder blues, teals and bright whites, and all these things found their ways into the homes and as well as these brighter colors, innocent pastels also dominated everything from lipsticks to cars. So during this time in the 1950s, more paint colors became available, bright clear aqua, pink and or an orchid, um, in interior design definitely showed up orchard and pink appliances were definitely dominant two-tone cars and clothes were prevalent the TV definitely influenced decor and fashion and um, these were all things that kind of added to colors that were widely used during this period and you can see from the palette that I have right here these are colors that were dominant during this you know decade Moving on to the 1960s, the 1960s had a lot of colors, but basically, to sum up the, 1950, the 1960s, pride and optimism kind of gave way to rebellion and self-discovery. Um, this time period was characterized by experimentation and exploration. The 1960s saw everything from civil disobedience to a government-funded lunar landing. It was the start of the revolution against gender and sex. It was the birth of rock and roll. And it had a lot of clashing of attitudes dealing with politics. There was a new war on the rise. And it probably was deemed one of the most adventurous yet um, time periods. And it kind of had a combination of unrest and happiness. And they kind of met with some sort of collision. During this turbulent decade, there was a period of organized defiance, a freedom to experiment, and a redefinition uh, of fashion. The British invasion reshaped our cultural identity and gave artists the courage to create psychedelic squirrels and pop art prints. Yellows and oranges made famous by Andy Warhol were everywhere. There was a big youth movement with the beatnecks and the hippies. There was the psychedelic fluorescent colors and they showed up in a lot of things. There was the black and red Spanish styles that were very popular during this time and there were bright color combinations that shock like purple and red, blue and green, and yellow and orange. And you can see that the color palette that I have right here is a very colorful one and there were lots of bright colors that were indicative of the 1960s. Things changed a little bit in the 1970s. There was definitely a return to earth tones. Um, very popular colors were the avocado green, gold, and the rust. And these things showed up in everything from kitchen decor to clothing. These subtle tones were drawn more from the environment and different cultures. Um, this was essentially the birth of earth tones and in the 1970s there was lots of wood paneling, brown couches crossed with darker brown glittering gold and soft pale yellow plaid. There was lots of brown yarn lampshades. Um, the era basically seemed like it almost wanted to turn it turn back to nature and step out of all of the chemicals, the Vietnam War, the anger, everything all together. 
and these earth tones finally yielded to the shiny pinks and purples ushered in by the disco era that was happening a little bit later on in the decade. So the color influences were mostly focused on the earth, the environment. Um, avocado green and the harvest gold were everywhere. They were in decors, appliances, all kinds of stuff. Greens, browns, and oranges were really popular. Um, daisies, rainbows, and mushrooms kind of showed up a lot. The handcraft aspect of um, different sorts of things that were in people's homes were very important, as well as uh, the lovely shag carpet. And you can see some of the colors that I have included in the palette for the 1970s. Lots of these earthy browns and yellows, um, greens, oranges, a little bit of red. The 1980s was the basically the next population boom after the baby boomer after the baby boomers. The 1980s gave birth itself to a new um, familiar familiarity, and black and white came back very striking. Teals, reds, and oranges stepped up stepped up almost as high as the the big poofy hairstyles. This was the rocker decade for many. Um, if you recall, people like Joan Jett, Tina Turner, Cyndi Lauper, they were all popular and they gave rise to their own fashion following. Um, there was also a very androgynous pop culture that was born at the, during the 1980s. And in the homes, the 80s kept the ideals of the 1970s in mind in terms of the colors being soothing and comforting. They just weren't associated with quite the earth brown um, prevalence that was popular in the 1970s. The hair was um, definitely really big and sprayed up to the max, um, very poofy. Makeup was very hardcore and there was lots of crazy eyeshadow combinations that were going along then. Extended eyeliner um, almost up to people's forehead in some cases was very popular. The 80s were billed as a very extravagant decade and also as a color conscious decade that began with glitter and gold and then moved toward powerful red and corporate navy with muted mauves and teals. So our color palette consisted of mauve, slate blue, gray, a white geese color. White was real popular during the 80s. There was an influence for uh, Southwest style. Um, Victorian jewel tones were popular and clutter became somewhat stylish. And here were some colors that came out of that decade that were popular. Definitely you saw a lot of things with the you know, base colors like black and white and reds and the teals, they were real popular. In the 1990s, this was basically the decade of kind of punk rock. The early 90s were, um, you know, people wore a lot of bright neon colors. Those were cool. Um, hair was being dyed in many colors. A lot of people forgot what their original hair color actually was. Mohawks were super popular. Um, and even in this venue, the makeup that people was women were wearing became more natural. Um, light brown eyeshadow or anything similar seemed to be good. Um, neutral tones gained popularity predominantly in the green family. Neutrals like gray, khaki, and navy were very popular. The 1990s are best known for the colored neutrals, soft yellows, yellow greens, and corals. Tints of pink and peach were equally prevalent and gray actually took on a more lavender bluish hue and red was used often as a like almost as a tint so eventually these tints evolved into a gray with almost a bluish cast that kind of led to the neutral blue lavender um, as a very popular color of the decade various shades of blue became widely seen and it definitely was the hue of the late 1990s um, so if we kind of sum up the 1990s, we had you know, a, a lightening of our popular color palette overall. The retro colors became very popular. Incoming brights, um, there were lots of licensed products. Places like Pottery Barn and Ikea became popular and they had a big influence on the colors of that decade. And definitely clean and green were popular. 
and here you can see the color palette for this decade. And then the um, first decade of the 2000s, there were many um, throwback kind of retro trends coming about. It's hard to pick out of this decade specific defining colors, but even with all its mimicry and, you know, like nostalgia of designs, something of this decade speaks boldly. Um, the internet definitely reached a complete new level and user activity, um, television, almost is obsolete right now next to computers. Um, the big trends in interior design are using things like uh, focusing focus wall and flow everything from vivid reds to earth tones seem to call to the individual specifically and the decade of on-demand television shows and TiVos um, you know every it's kind of like the me decade um, this decade is definitely a hodgepodge of balanced living and getting more eco um, and also there's like a huge push to become more global you can kind of, uh, people want to express the essence of sultry origins in the form of like spice infused colors. Um, there's bold shades of orange, red, gold, and green, and they balance with the, the browns that are roasted in, in sandy tones. Today's um, neutral palette is very sophisticated. Warm tones blend with cool tones. Natural material add depth and character. And if you look to fashion and advertising, you'll see the impact of these kinetic contrasts. Um, it pulsates with energy and style. There's intense color accents and spare minimalistic backgrounds. Geometrically shaped furniture and contemporary art help to create this kind of wow factor of the first decade of the 2000s. There's um, shades of urban, kind of eco you know, inspired grassy greens and yellow greens, and also the tranquility of water and sky definitely show its face with like a real serene blue type color, um, as well as just the influence of the raw natural materials like sand and wood. Um, those are, that's where we're kind of turning for our neutral hues. So if you kind of are looking for the next color wave, um, you want to think about conscious luxury that kind of blushes with sophisticated colors. So there's um, cosmetic inspired pinks as well as blues and purples that reflect brilliant sheen of, of gemstones. But definitely, um, you know, fashion is the place that influences color the most. So this decade is in the colors that are prevalent are come from the eco greens, of course, because there's a real push for you know, anything that's eco-friendly, um, ocean blues, earth-inspired neutrals, multicultural global palettes are popular, and just clean, spacious color palettes. And this is kind of a, a little summary of the colors that were very popular during this decade. So I think it's kind of interesting just to look back in time and see what colors were widely used and how they influenced the designs of any particular decade. And this is a good place to go for inspiration and just for, you know, interest. It's interesting to see how, you know, there are colors that become popular during a certain time period and you can see these things popping up in all of advertising and design.